excitement level like after a, a week of practice and how anxious you guys ready to play? I would say we're really excited. I mean, you try to play it down, you know, people say just another game, this, that, and the other. Like, this is a winner go home situation. Like, we're extremely excited. And I think that Nissan Stadium, um, this is a huge opportunity for our fans to show us what they have. And we can't wait to see them come and support us. It's going to be, Nashville's an amazing city. This place is just a party town. So uh, hopefully hopefully we keep that trend rolling on Saturday. And we're going to go out there, you know, and um, put on a show for them. Um, that's where the week of preparation comes from, coming out here, um, working each and every day and, and not taking it for granted um, and understand what we have in front of us here. So, Average yards per, per playoff game is actually second in, in NFL history. What is it about the postseason that just makes the, your, your game elevate and just how the intensity and everything elevates it? Um, I'm never a stat guy. I never pay attention to it. Um, if my team needs me. To you know, like you said, second in, 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 in numbers and yards and things like that, um, I'm here for it. Um, but we're just gonna take what the defense give us and just go crazy. A game games like this, the reason you wanted to come here? Absolutely. Um, the team camaraderie here is the biggest thing. Um, from the coaches to the players, everybody they live, breathe football. Um, and I'm that type of player, and I came here and I fit in very well with the guys. It was very welcome and things like that. So um, you definitely come here to be able to play in the postseason and get things going. Do you feel like you're in a good place, too, as far as heading into the postseason where, where you want it, want it to be? Absolutely. I'm in a great space right now, um, confident, everything. Um, I'm ready to go. Taylor, after dealing with the knee stuff and the, and the cramps and – Whatever you had going on early in the in the season, where do you feel like your game has grown to? Uh, has grown to? Yeah. I think you know this season the way it started obviously is definitely not the way I wanted to start. Um, having a couple of injuries here and there that sidelined me for a few games. Um, you don't want that. I think if you look in how ACLs go for a lot of guys, especially bigger guys, this is a, a very common thing. And in my off season. You know, my whole focus every single day, the whole entire day was to how can I get my knee right and ready to play. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I think I might have jumped in a little too fast uh, in the beginning and kind of pressed myself in, in, uh, a little too early. But um, I think production has, has continued to go up. And, um, you know, for me, it's this has not been my most consistent season by any means. It hasn't been my best season by any means. But... Um, you know, it doesn't matter anymore because it's the playoffs. So there's no excuses for anything. We got to, this is a new season, new opportunity. And, and so none of those 17 games matter anymore. Taylor, like you're in a good spot now? Like, how are you playing now? I'd say, uh, you know, I think uh, if you go back to the Houston game, I think my run game wasn't very good. I think pass protection was good. Um, but consistently, it's gotten better each week. That's the process with an ACL. And, um, you know, in the beginning of the year, you kind of feel things here and there. And as you keep moving forward, you, you actually get healthier in that position. And uh, a lot of those things stem from those areas. Who so you can tell you knowing the body so well, like knees, lead the backs, lead the ankle, lead a whole bunch of stuff. So um, like I said, being sidelined a few times, bought a huge bummer. And I wish I could have been out there. Uh, they know I would be out there if I could. But the, uh, the reality is that I wasn't able to play at those times. But when I've been out there, I've been not my – traditional productive self. I don't think I would compare myself to my past years with this year. However, I've been productive and um, want to continue that trend going into this game. How much do you think the bye week has benefited you guys, knowing that you know before when you've gone to the playoffs, you haven't had that right. luxury? I think it's tremendous. I think um, having guys get healthy, I know we've had a number of, a number of guys deal with issues. that we've, I mean, set records of guys playing in the league this year. Um, and that says a lot about our coaches, how we've been continued to come out and be able to play the way we did. Uh, but anytime you have a bye, uh, as long as you take advantage of the bye and work on yourself and work on your body, work on your mental, work on your conditioning, if you use that as an opportunity, it's always going to pay off for you. If you don't, then, you know, things happen. You've seen that in the past with other teams, with one seeds that um, don't take advantage of the situations. You guys have found success running the football and even, you know, ended up the number one seed without Derrick Henry. Mm -hmm. But... If he were to come back, what is the boost? Like, what's the, the, the push that that gives each of you guys? For me, I mean, it's very exciting to have him back, you know, within the lineup. Um, but our jobs can't change, you know, the way I attack the approaches, approach the game. Um, whoever it is, whoever that running back, I got to go out there and do my job to protect them. I don't want my guy making a tackle or even putting him in harm's way. Yeah, I think 
I mean, when Derek's not in there, Derek, I mean, we all know what Derek Henry can do when right. he's in there. And um, Julio, AJ, the receiving, the receiver group, have, they've done a great job of stepping up. Those running backs have done a great job of stepping up. Um, and adding Derek to the mix, if that happens, is exciting. However, you know, we got to go out and take it. Just because 22 is in the game doesn't mean we're going to automatically win if he does play. It's, you know, we got to go out there. It's 11 guys playing football and taking care of each other and playing as hard as we can. That's all that matters. You guys have played in, in playoff games before. What, what do you tell some of the young guys who haven't, and what's the maybe intensity switch going from regular season to postseason? Yeah, um, for me, I talk to the guys, just take advantage of your opportunity. Um, I've been in the league 11 years now, and this is my only second time having the first, you know, first seed and things like that. So you can't take them for granted. You know, you got to be ready to go, and it's, it's when to go home. So, like, don't take any energy home with you. Just leave everything you got when you come to work and when, you, when we get to the game. Yeah, there's no saving yourself here. Luckily for us, I mean, the whole offensive line, all, all five of those starters have played in the playoff games before. I've been there. Nate Davis is the most spoiled out of all of us. Every year he's been in the league, he's been in the playoffs. So, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, the younger guys, too, I mean, those guys have done such a great job of staying locked in and knowing where they're at, especially you watch games. If you watch Corey Levin or Dylan on the sideline during games, how dialed they are. They're writing stuff down. They're making sure we're in our P's and Q's. They tell us stuff when we come off the sideline. So I have no question that they'll be ready in case of an emergency. Do you think the stadium is going to be maybe at a different level than it ever has been since I you've been here? I think it should be. I mean, is a, the playoffs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not. You know, I think a couple of weeks ago we talked about Logan Ryan and his statement. Um, and like I said before, I love Logan, but what an opportunity is for these fans to shut him up. Last question. I guess since you guys are standing together, what, Taylor, what has it been like being teammates with Julio here with the Titans and Julio vice versa? What do you know about Taylor before he got here? What do you think about him now? Oh, uh, for me, I mean, he's a great guy, man. Um, great gentleman, you know. <laughs> That's true. No, nah, seriously, he is. Um, but like he said, like early on, like we kind of been on and off the field, things like that, you know, but we've been in passing, crossing, things like that. Um, I can definitely consider him as a friend and a brother, you know, outside of just, the, you know, the game of football. I think for Julio, when, when you sign him, he's a type of free agent signing. When you see that in the off season, you know, me and my wife are talking like, holy shit, Julio Jones is coming on this team. And um, it's cool to meet a guy with that kind of star power and talk about him like he's not here right now, but... <laughs> They've had that kind of star power, but you meet him and he's a humble guy. He takes care of his business. He works. And I, I know he said it. I said it like there's been times we've been sidelined. We don't want that. But um, the work ethic is never in question with him.